Today we will talk about letting go. Letting go of what? Letting go of our false thinking, our attachment to this body and mind. We will use two verses from the past seven Buddhas to explain how to let go. The body is born from formless. If you look at this body, it has form and appearance. But if you see for its origin, it's actually empty and formless. When the elements of earth water, fire, and wind unite, the body comes into being. But when the cause conditions disperse, the body no longer exists. Therefore, the nature is emptiness. As all forms are manifested as illusion. Illusion is another word for emptiness. It's like we are in a dream. When we wake up from the dream, why should we hold on to the things that's in the dream? We need to recognize that we are actually in a dream state. So that was talking about the body. Now let's talk about the mind. The consciousness of the illusionary creatures is originally insubstantial. This illusionary creature is us because our mind is the deluded mind, the basic ignorance consciousness. So we are actually the dream mind. If we wake up, then we are the Buddha mind. So all we have to do is to wake up from this dream state. And how do we wake up? We need to truly understand the essence of our body and mind. In Buddhism, we talk about our body and mind as the five aggregates or the five skantas. It's made out of form, feeling, perception, mental formation, and consciousness. So the body is the form, the other four, feeling, perception, mental formation, and consciousness that make up our mind. We are all clinging to these five skantas and we don't even know it's our delusion. First is our form. This is the thing we are most attached to but it's actually made out of matters. Buddha said there are 32 elements in the body and it's full of molecules and cells. It's constantly changing and it's not reliable. We try to clean and try to make ourselves look good, self-conscious about our weight, about how we look when we have wrinkles or we're going bald. Every day we're working on this body, which is a delusion. We are attached to our feelings. We can have the feeling of pleasure, displeasure, or neutral, but our feeling is a reaction to the external world. So our feeling, our emotion is very unstable because it's controlled by the external environment. Then it's our perception. This is our thinking. Our thinking follows our feelings. If we like something is pleasurable, we develop greed and we want more. If it's displeasure, we develop hatred or anger and we try to get rid of it. So our thinking can be very polluted if it's based on our feelings. Then we have the mental formation. It's the activities of the mind. Now it's becoming a very strong judgment and discrimination. It's full of the personality. So it's a very strong image of a self and this activity compounds exponentially. So this becomes a very strong ego and very strong self. And then we have consciousness, which is the subtle basis for our feeling, perception, and formation. Basically, it's our alaya consciousness, the storehouse that takes us to all the reincarnation. So why do we reincarnate? It's actually our clinging to the five skin tests that is causing the vicious cycle of reincarnation. The Buddha tells us to look at them carefully and recognize their emptiness. That way we can really be awakened and out of the suffering. So Buddha used simple metaphors for us to see its emptiness. For our form, we should look at it like foam. A mass of bubbles, it doesn't really keep its shape. We should look at our feelings like bubbles. It doesn't last at all. 
Look at our perception like a mirage. It's actually an optical illusion from the reflection of light. And we should see our mental formation like the plantain tree. When you take out all the leaves of the plantain tree, it actually doesn't have a core remaining. And we should see our consciousness as the magician pulling a rabbit out of the hat. It's actually an illusion by sleight of hand. So all these are just illusion. We are attached to something that is not trustworthy. There was a famous Russian writer. He wrote a lot of very famous novels, but his family life was full of suffering. He married the woman that he loved, but the woman was jealous in nature. She was even jealous of their own children. One time she grabbed a gun and shot a hole through the daughter's photo. So they fought every day. And the worst thing is he kept a private diary blaming everything on the wife. The wife saw it, she became very upset. She torn out pages, burned it. And she wrote her own diary, making him the villain. She actually even wrote a novel titled Whose Fault? She put all the blame on him. They turned the only home they have into what Tolstoy called a lunatic asylum. So why do these two people live like this? Because they are so attached to their feelings, perception, and formation. They lost control. Neither of them had the sense to say stop. That's how we are deluded in our lives right now. So the key is to let go, to wake up, and see the truth. Lastly, either sin or rightness is of emptiness and non-abiding. Karma, retribution of our sin and rightness, they are also empty in nature and it's not abiding, it's always changing. When it's cause and condition, it's constantly changing and has duality, which means it's not abiding. It must be empty in essence. So anything that has a form that is changing is not for us to rely on. We need to go back to the essence, which is emptiness. In the Shokama Sutra, Buddha tells the story about Yajnadatta. On impulse, one morning, Yajnadatta held a mirror and he fell in love with the head in the mirror. And he thought he lost his own head. So he ran frantically around the city looking for his head until someone went to him and told him, you have your head, you never lost your head. Then that's when he woke up from his madness. So why did Buddha tell us about Yajnadatta? Because we are Yajnadatta. We fell in love with the head in the mirror. That's our deluded mind that we're using right now. We felt like we lost our own head, which is our Buddha nature, our true mind. So we went frantically searching for it when we don't need to because we never lost our head in the first place. When the causes and conditions of the madness ceases, the nature that is not mad will naturally come forth. So this is the famous line, when madness ceases, Bodhi appears. We just have to let go of our madness, of our greed, anger, ignorance. When it stops, the Bodhi actually comes forth naturally. Our supreme, pure, bright mind originally prevailed the Dharma realm. That is our true mind. So we don't have to work so hard to look for our head. And we don't have to work so hard trying to gain certification of Buddhahood because we already have it within us. The second verse of this Buddha is telling us just that. It is Buddha's body to know the body as insubstantial. This is talking about the first two lines about the body. When you recognize that your body is empty, then you have the Buddha body. We call it the Dharma body. It is the Buddha's illusion to perceive the mind as illusion. That's talking about the two lines here. When you see our conscience, our mind is actually illusion. That's Buddha's knowing. That's Buddha's illusion. The two together, perceiving the emptiness of body and mind in essence, there is no difference between him and Buddha. 
if we can just understand the emptiness of our body and mind, then this person is Buddha. So this is the powerful prajna that will end all the suffering. This is called enlightenment. So all the past Buddha is telling us exactly the same thing. We already have it within us. We just have to let go the madness, let go the delusion. Lastly, we will end with the story in Lotus Sutra about the parable of the impoverished son. There was a boy that ran away from home for many years. He became very poor and confused. His father loved him very much but had no idea where to go look for him. Over the years, the father became very rich. Fifty years passed. One day, the boy showed up in the father's estate. The father recognized his son right away, but the son did not recognize his father. So the father sent a messenger to greet him, but he thought they were trying to arrest him, and he was so scared, he actually fainted. So the father said to leave him alone. Later, the father asked the servants to dress in rags and to offer him a job as a janitor in the olden day, that means shoveling excrements. He gladly accepted the job and thought it was perfect for him. And he did it for 20 years. At 20 years, he got promoted, got involved in the family business, and became the head manager of the family business. Before his death, the father gathered all the friends and all the important people of the city to his bedside. He then revealed the identity of his true son. His son inherited all the family wealth. So the rich father is Buddha. We are the son. We already have the wealth within us. That's our Buddha nature. So we actually don't have to work that 20 years and wait for certification. If we just let go of all the delusion, we immediately go back to our true self. If the madness ceases, Bodhi appears. If we can just let go of our clinging to the body and mind, then we will realize Oh, there's actually nothing to cling to. You will feel this relief and be back to who you really are. Use this prajna to transform your whole life and you will be enlightened. So that's the class for today. Thank you for listening. Amitabha.